Well, I think there's really three key terms. The first is uh, an IVD. Typically when we talk about IVD, we're talking about FDA cleared or approved products. So sort of your classic kits plus instruments, often there's software involved. We get those approved through FDA and then those are distributed through laboratories. Um, the other type of diagnostic that has really blossomed, particularly in the last 10 years, is a laboratory developed test. So this is a test that is developed by a single laboratory. The result is delivered by a single laboratory. And currently those tests are under FDA enforcement discretion. So they, don't, they have to comply with CLIA requirements, but they don't have to comply with FDA requirements. I think the other key term is companion diagnostics. So this has been um, defined now very specifically by FDA. Like companion diagnostic is the test that is specifically used to show that the drug is safe and efficacious. So if a drug, say, needs a BRAF test, the companion diagnostic is the specific test that was used in the clinical trial likely and gets the FDA approval. Now the situation right now is that with the laboratory developed tests, there are other tests often for the same thing, for example, BRAF, that have not been reviewed by FDA. Those are not being seen as specifically the companion diagnostics, so they're being allowed to stay on the market. So there's a bit of a, bit of a, a two-tiered system going on, and a lot of the kit manufacturers are pretty upset that they have to go through the FDA requirements, but LDTs do not. FDA has taken a very hands-on approach, We're looking for a lot of data, at least in the case of um, IVD products. Um, in Europe, for example, the, we're regulated by the in vitro diagnostic directive, which is much looser. A lot, most diagnostics that actually come into Europe don't need review by a notified body. It's more of a um, self-notification type of situation. So it's fairly, fairly quick, fairly easy, but sometimes the data is not always there to support use of that diagnostic. Um, from there, we go into all different kinds of regulatory regimes. So some, um, for example, in Brazil, where there is quite a bit of oversight, um, but then in other situations, you know, most of Africa, um, there really is almost no oversight. Uh, Australia is starting to regulate diagnostics, but it's really at the beginning of it. So um, I think a lot of tests still around the world are laboratory developed, and a lot of folks see tests as a extension of physician practice rather than medical devices. So, you know, HER2 is the longest term example. I think that's been fairly successful, but that came out quite a while ago. So, but I think more recently we've had the Roche example with BRAF, the Abbott example with the ALK test, as well as some others that have just come out in the last couple of weeks. So, I think the real success is that FDA, um, particularly CDRH, has has basically an impeccable record with making sure that the test is ready to be approved at the same time as the drug. I think a lot of folks, when they started talking about this policy a few years ago, thought they, they just wouldn't be able to make it, but so far they have a spotless record. So I think that's a, a huge success. I think that definitely next generation sequencing is there and with the larger panel tests similar to what foundation medicine is doing where we can test for an awful lot of things all at once, that's definitely very exciting. As well as the point of care type tests. So there you wouldn't have the breadth of menu but you would get very rapid results. And I think that could uh, um, significantly change how companion diagnostics are delivered. It varies a bit in each program, but I really think working together early is the key thing. Um, I think you have to actually partner before you understand what the revenues on either side is going to be, and you really have to be partnering in terms of science. So it's not, I'm going to hire a diagnostic partner and that's just going to go away and I don't need to worry about it again. And from the diagnostic perspective, it's not, I'm just going to develop the tests that they gave me the specification for and I'm not going to care after that. I think we really have to understand the biological relevance of these markers and really work together to make the right products.